Howdy, y'all. It's your favorite trainer in the belt, Michael. Today, we're going to go over programming for an athlete, specifically a volleyball player. We're going to do it Zoom style, so you can check out the program. We're going to analyze, and we're going to make a better one. A student recently reached out to us, and they were working with a volleyball player, and they sent me a program from NASM, and the program sucks, so we're going to break it down, what's terrible about it, how we can make a better one. So let's do a share screen. This is right off of their blog, NASM, and this is going to be for a vertical jump with the OPT model. It goes into the science, so eccentric, amortization, concentric. If you're not familiar with that, that can definitely, that's how plyometrics works. It's in the uh, coordination, blah, blah, blah. So we're going to get right into the program, starting with stabilization. So they're going to have you foam roll. Obviously, you got to foam roll or you're going to die. So you foam roll your calves, your adductors, your TFL, and your lats for one set, 30 seconds. You have two calf muscles, so it's going to be one minute there. You're going to have, you have two adductors, it's another minute there. Two TFLs, another minute there. Two lats, another minute there. So you're spending four minutes just foam rolling, and then you can do four minutes of static stretching. This is one area where I highly disagree with the warm-up. Ten minutes of just foam rolling stretching, you don't need to do that. And then on top of it, they're going to get into another close to five to 10 minutes of activation stuff. So we're not even in, we're gonna do a speed ladder and there's just too much evidence out there where speed ladders are terrible for increasing speed. It's just all flashiness. So you're looking at a half hour before you've been lifting weights. You're gonna do your box jump down and then you're gonna hold that and then you're gonna do it for eight reps. Uh, box jump downs are a progression. You would not wanna do it with a beginner. Here's the resistance training. A step up, balanced overhead press, sagittal plane, cable chest press, single leg dumbbell row, single leg front raise, single leg Romanian deadlift. Two sets of 15, 4 to one tempo. So the, the weight's really light, which is great. You want to strengthen ligaments and tendons, and uh, I appreciate the, the slow tempo. Four eccentric, hold for two, one concentric. But the volume is just really low. If you're gonna be doing a total body workout three times a week for two sets in your chest, two sets of your shoulders and back, six total sets per week, I would usually do that at least per workout. So generally we wanna aim for 10 minimum to as high as 40 more advanced working sets per week. And this is giving you six. So just the overall volume frequency intensity of this is very low. So after three weeks, you'd go into phase two. Same thing, a lot of warm-ups. Then we're going to get into some activation stuff, more ladders. And then we're going to do bench press and a push-up, seated lat pull down into a cable row, a single leg dumbbell press, lunges into a step up. Again, the volume is just really, really low. We're still using a lot of that 4 2, one tempo. And then the intensity is, is not optimal. So... I'm not going to, I'll, I'll go slow if you want to screenshot this, but you can just get, get an idea of the type of warm-ups. I don't know what I'm doing right there. What happened? Uh -oh. But the, there we go. So then it gets into strength and the maximal power. So this is a, a four-month program where even the last group, you have four sets of a, you're doing PAP training, which is post-activation, potentation, deadlift into a snatch, bench press into rotational chest press, barbell shrugs into squat jumps. It tells me that this person doesn't know much about programming. When you put a squat jump at the end of a program and you're only resting 60 seconds. So it's great that they, they, they cited science in the beginning, but they're not applying it. You always, so I'm going to get out of this because it's giving me a headache because it's a horseshit program. And I'm going to give you something that's from a strength coach. This is something I developed for a, a program for, come on for a girl who wants to improve her vertical height. It's specific to the sport. That's what NSCA looks at. It's called the needs analysis. You have your bioenergetics. Is it ATP, PC? Is it more oxidative? You're going to have common injuries, and then you're going to have muscles used and muscle actions. So volleyball players are going to be predominantly lower body focused. We want to have a lot of plyos in there, and we're going to implement plyos appropriately with progressive overload. So here's the program that I designed. You're going to be doing resistance training three times a week, plyos three times a week, non-consecutive days. Now, if you wanted to do plyos on a day that you're lifting your legs, it's perfectly fine. Just do them in the beginning. So I would have you do the plyos 
in the morning and then come back for a 12 or two o'clock workout with weights. Here's the warm up five minutes of whatever you want dynamics. I always tell my athletes, and let me just put it in there now. If you want to work with athletes, do not get the PES. It's a joke amongst uh, strength coaches. I have my CSCS. I've taught trainers for over 10 years, and I have my internship at the University of Connecticut, and I've worked with top athletes, and they're the number one kinesiology program in the nation. And you would just never see what NASM has you programming. So I feel for those that get the PES because you're not going to be prepared to work with real athletes. So here's how I tell my, my volleyball players. Practice is at 6 a.m. Get in at 545 if you want to foam roll. If you like foam rolling, cool. If you don't, don't worry about it. Practice starts at 6. Together, we're going to do five minutes of dynamic warming up. So we're going to do some deep squats. We're going to come over our ankles, work on dorsiflexion. We'll work on some thoracic rotation. We'll do some modified jumps, really, really low. I always tell my athletes, pretend like you're clearing a penny. Nothing. You're just working on the form, core engagement, explosive off the ground, tight, relaxed, and, then, and nice, soft landing. We'll do some frontal leg swings. We'll do sagittal leg swings. We're going to do some karaoke's. We're going to do modified little agility drills. <clears throat> Five minutes is all it's going to take. And then we're going to get into the lifts of the day. We're going to do a core pattern followed by a core pattern and then an accessory. So trap bar deadlift. I love this for athletes that are a little taller, longer femurs. If it was a conventional deadlift, it might place a lot of them into a, a flexed lumbar region. So for volleyball players, I typically like trap bar deadlift, which would be our hinge pattern. And then banded push-ups. And then plank. So how that's going to work is you, know, you get your trap bar, put 10s on it, do 10 reps, and then you go into your banded push-ups, and you go into a maximal voluntary contraction planks and BCs. And then I'm going to do that for 30 seconds, rest for a minute or two. <clears throat> Repeat, add weight, banded push-ups, make it a little more challenging, put a leg out there. Planks, put a leg out there, change it up a little bit. Three rounds of that, then we're going to go into a weighted unilateral step up by three by 10 per leg. And then we're going to do banded rows, which will be uh, three by 15, 12, 10. So every set you're increasing the weight. And then now we're going to do a side plank. Side plank is going to be working the, the lateral core. And then after those three, we're going to go into goblets, which will be our squat pattern, three by 20. Get the, get the heart rate up there a little bit until the MI press and the payoffs. So we have a hinge pattern, unilateral squat. That's the main emphasis. We're going to complement it with pulling, pushing, and some shoulder work typically keeping it about maybe 130, 140 degrees, it's going to be more optimal for a lot of your uh, athletes, for volleyball players specifically where we're at. Five minute, this would be the workout number two. So this would be on like Wednesday. I'll have the plyometrics in a second. So workout number two would be weighted bilateral step up. So you'll notice a great coach isn't going to put a bunch of exercises into the program. You keep the fundamentals the same. So you keep it simple, right? So we do step ups again, we're doing goblets and then we're incorporating a bridge instead of a trap bar. We just overload the exercises uh, day by day, week by week. Every workout is not gonna be different. I can always tell you a shitty strength coach or just trainer in general, when you look at the programming week by week, day by day, and it's completely different than the other day. That tells me that you're playing into the athlete or the client's what you think they want. I don't give a shit what my clients think they want. I'm applying, I'm making a workout that's going to help them get to what they need. And so we're going to do weighted bilateral step ups. So that's just going to be two arms starting to load up into banded rows into plank touches. So we'll do uh, heavier on the step ups this time, whereas the prior workout, we were at the second exercise circuit. Goblets, three by 15, 12, 10. Mondays, pretend like we use 25. So today we would use 25, 25, and then 40. So we're making it more challenging each time. And then we're gonna get into some bridges, three by 30, Aussies or chin-ups, depending on the capabilities. If you're gonna do eccentric chin-ups, three by five, three to five, and then push-ups. The last workout of the week, we're gonna be doing some hip thrusts, push-ups, suitcase walks with ball juggles. So maybe you, you're walking and they're, they're bouncing with the ball, make it specific to their sport. Trap bar deadlift again, landmine press again, side planks with hip flexion, strengthen the psoas, step ups, chin ups, ball bridges. So you look at the exercise selection. You choose the main exercise, you keep it the same and you progressively overload. I hate seeing a lot of exercise. It tells me that that coach doesn't understand kinesiology, movement and programming. So those workouts would have been Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Here's a 
plyo workout that can be done on A, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, prior to the workouts, or B, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Vertical jumps, three by six, max height, focus on the landing optimization. You're resting three minutes. Always can tell a crappy coach if they're having their athlete do a lot of jumps, A, B, jumps for time, C, not resting long enough. If you're resting for 30 seconds to a minute, you're not allowing for optimal, optimal type two recruitment. So you're essentially training your type one muscle fibers to go fast, which you can't do. So that trainer sucks. <laughs> Vertical jumps, three by six. What do you do during the rest? Nothing, get on your phone, get on Tinder, get on whatever the hell you're on today and just chill out. Then you do your second set of six. Then you do your third set of six. Then, six. then you go to vertical jumps into a single leg landing. So it's the same principle. You're jumping bilaterally, but now you're landing unilaterally. Three by six, resting three minutes. Calf jumps. This is where you're just jumping as high as you can with a minimal knee bend. Do that for three by 20, 90 second rest periods. Training your type one muscle fibers when you do calf jumps, but it's just giving them some conditioning. Single leg calf races, three by 10. Wall sits three by 30. Jump rope, five by maybe three or four minutes, depending on the sport. So like for a wrestler, you do it three minutes, three minutes on, one minute off. Football player, maybe it's high intense for 30 seconds, rest for 30 seconds. You make it specific to the individual. And that's called set, specific adaptation to impose demand. So each time you're going to do the same thing, but we're just going to change. That's all week one. Week two, we're going to do the same things, but more volume. Three by eight, vertical jumps, three by eight, calf jumps by 25. Week three, three by 10, vertical jumps, three by 10, calf jumps, three by 30. So we constantly are going up. That's progressive overload. That's periodization. It bugs the hell out of me when I just I look at people who send me programs and say, can you analyze this? I say, Honestly, I can't because it's just shit thrown on a wall. And I can't make sense out of someone's program who doesn't have a background in movement. They call themselves a coach, strength coach, because they have some simple certification. They don't understand movement. If you want to get better working with athletes, you need to intern with people who are working with athletes. Observe, watch, understand the programming, implement it on your own athletes. Week four, we're doing vertical jumps doubles. So it'd be jump up, come back down, jump up, and then you rest. And then again, jump up, come down, jump up, and then we're gonna rest. Like 10, 15 seconds between those couples. And then we're doing the same thing. That would be our first month of plyos. And then we get into month two for resistance training. Trap bar into step ups, banded push ups into planks. So we're making it. Look at volume, frequency, and intensity. Those are the three things I'm looking at. So this will be month two. We're working out Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We're getting down into 80% of our one rep max. We're starting to lift some serious weight and we're gonna go into step ups afterwards. And then we're gonna do hip thrust into rows, into side planks. Then we'll do goblets into landmine press into pull ups. So look at the first month. Now look at the second month. Still the same exercises, but we're going heavier. Day two, same stuff, five minute warm up. You know, add some new things in there that make it kind of enjoyable for your athlete. We're gonna do goblets four by 10, eight, six, six. So if my athlete was doing 25 pounds week one, we're probably warming up with 50s now. The first month of training is primarily a neurological. You're gonna see a lot of strength gains that first month. You start seeing more hypertrophy and development weeks three, four, five, six plus. So the intensity from just doing a set of goblets into a push up into a plank. Now we're doing a heavier goblet into reverse lunge. So the work capacity is going up into an incline press. Multi, multi, multi. This is significantly more challenging. We'll do hip thrust, standing military press, suitcase, ball taps. Again, variation. As a trainer, maybe I'm bouncing it to them while they're walking with the weight on the side. Single leg bridge into Aussies, more chin ups, push ups. Let's do a three minute push up challenge at the end. Day three, which would be on Friday, hip thrust, three by 12, 10, 10, push-ups, shoulder taps, so we're working on core, and then some suitcase walks with more ball juggles. Trap bar deadlift, three by 10, landmine press, step ups, same exercises, but it's boring. Who gives a shit? You're gonna get results. That's why I love working with athletes, because they don't bitch and complain about the the variety, they want results, they wanna be safe, and they wanna get stronger for their sports. So when I train an athlete, it's great because I put in the same exercises and you overload them and they get results. It's the same way that I work out. I wish it was the same with our clients, 
but you have to play the game when it comes to general population. That's a different talk. Athletes are so much easier to work with. Month two plyos, we're gonna get into depth jumps now. So you're gonna start on a box jumping down and then up. Our volume is gonna start getting increased. So our, uh, they call them ground contacts. Maybe the first month we're around 40 to 80 per workout. Now we're getting 80 to 100. So we're gonna do some rotations now. We're gonna start doing a little shorter rest periods. So three for the first group, two for the next group. And we just compounding the interest. So the second week, we're gonna get into vertical uh, triples. Then we're gonna get into more depth jumps. Third week, we're gonna do doubles for the depth jump. We're gonna do fourth week, fours for the for vertical jump. So first week, uh, second week of month one, we were doing boom, boom, rest 10, 15 seconds. Now we're going to go four, boom, 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 rest 10, 15 seconds. Do it again. So you're getting 10 to 12 total jumps. And those are the plyos. If you want this program, shoot me a message and I will give it to you. This is a volleyball program that I designed for a Division I athlete who was getting back into her programming at uh, Back East. And so she needed a program. Uh, two months before she started her conditioning in the, in the preseason. So I designed this for her. I sent it to her. You can shoot me a message on Instagram. This is the volleyball program. Hopefully this helped for you when it comes to programming for an athlete. You got to look at the needs analysis. What are their goals? So we put a lot of exercise into the lower body to strengthen around the knee and the ankle and the hip joint. That's preventative for common injuries in that sport. I would not give this program to a basketball player. They're similar, but they're different. So as a new coach, you start making a lot of these programs for different populations, and then you can compound this and you have an athlete that comes in and you already have it saved. So my challenge for you is to start making two to three month programs like this. And you can start selling them once you, you know, get recognized as quality programming, not foam rolling for 20, 30 minutes and your volume is six sets for the first week. That tells me that coach has nothing, no idea how to program. If you want me to take a look at your programming, shoot me a message. I will analyze it and we can even do a Zoom call together and I can give you some help on how to optimize your programming. You always want to look at the goals of the client, the muscles that are used, the muscle actions and the energy systems. So her goal was specifically to increase her vertical jump height. It wasn't to in in increase her conditioning. So I would make this a little different if her goal was to lose five, 10 pounds for the next season. So maybe at the end, so we'll go back to month one, we got a trap bar deadlift into banded pushups into planks, circuit one, circuit two. Maybe I'll start incorporating a little cardio in there. Weighted unilateral step ups into jump rope, into push ups, into a plank. Last one, goblets into a court run, into lateral raises, into a court run. I would put more metabolic conditioning in there if that was her goal. Show Up Fitness is where great trainers are made. We have classes every single day online. If you live in San Diego, La Jolla, West Hollywood, Los Angeles, or Santa Monica, we have daily classes where you get to come in and you get to ask questions to experienced trainers. You get to learn by doing, and you turn into a badass. Hopefully this helped you. I know it did. Have a great day, y'all.